Nimono sent me their new sound capsule to review. No need for SD cards, Wi-Fi, everything you need to record four people is in this tiny box. If you don't have Wi-Fi, this space recorder can store 15 hours of audio and will automatically upload it to the cloud when you have Wi-Fi. There are four mics, each with a different colored LED, and the space recorder in the middle can be used for spatial recording. I also love how convenient the carry case is. This has got all the magnets and the windbreakers for the microphones inside. When you hit record on the space recorder, it moves the microphone that you're using to the top and highlights it in red. It lets you know how long you've been recording for and the battery life of the space recorder and all of the microphones. It shows you the same thing when you look on your phone on the app and you can stop the recording from there. So I'm recording on the microphone now. I've clipped it onto my best top and any audio that you hear coming from the microphone, I won't have messed with in post. So no cleaning up, no denoising. This is just how it sounds. I'm, I've clipped it to the top of my vest top and this vest top doesn't have much structural integrity. So it means that the microphone, you know, it's not gaping, it's not falling off, it's not too heavy. It looks good, I think. I think the light is discreet. I think it's pretty. Each microphone has a different light on it and it just clips onto your shirt with a regular clip mechanism like this. It's quite small and at the top, it has a little hole so you know which way to point towards your chin, towards your mouth. Getting microphones attached to people's clothing can actually be quite difficult and can delay a record quite a lot. So I really like this tiny, thoughtful alternative that Nimono have introduced, which is a little magnet. So instead of having the microphone clipped to your clothing like this, because some people wear, I don't know, frilly clothes or don't have quite a low cut top and that's not possible. Instead, you can use the magnet to attach the mic like this. And this, believe it or not, is the windbreaker for the tiny microphone. So I have put the windbreaker around the space recorder and I'm impressed with how discreet it is and how pretty it still looks, which I think is really important. I'm tired of microphone foam and windbreakers looking really ugly and disrupting the video recording. So I'm happy with how this looks. So I am outside on my balcony. I know this is not quite outside outside, but it's not a very windy day. So I figured this place is as good as any. I've got the sound of traffic in the background, trees rustling slightly, birds singing, squawking. I have got the microphone on with the windbreaker and the space recorder with the windbreaker as well. I'm not sure how much of a difference that will make because it's just not a very windy day, but at least you'll be able to hear the comparison to before. And I am recording on my iPhone microphone so you can hear the difference in quality between the Nimono sound capsule and the iPhone recording. So now the microphone doesn't have the windbreaker on it and neither does the space recorder. Again, there is not much wind, so I don't know how much difference this will make, but here is a comparison anyway. As soon as you hit stop on the space recorder, all recordings are automatically uploaded to the cloud. It's a pretty fast upload, but obviously depends on how long the recording is. And then you can find all of your recordings here. If you go to from sound capsule on the left, and as you can see, the very top one is uploading as we speak. The sound capsule seems to handle uploads really well. If you stop recording on the sound capsule and immediately start a new recording, the upload continues. And for me, there haven't been any problems or losses of audio so far. Organization is also really easy on the website, so you can rename all of your recordings and store them in different project folders on the left. And when you click into one of your recordings, this is what you will see. You can share the audio with other people who can then download it and also leave comments and reply to your comments on different parts of the audio. You can also see which microphones were used, in this case, just the blue one. And then here you have the space recorder track, which basically records the ambient sounds from the room. So all of the room sounds, you can either keep those in the recording if you like the Atmos or delete it entirely. And you'll see that each microphone is uploaded in a separate track, making editing much easier. That's pretty standard, but also really important. Another thing to note is the sound capsule isolates each voice in each different mic, so you won't hear your co-host's voice bleed into the audio on your mic. Now, you can also see this kind of glitter emoji at the top. If you click that, you see that you can enhance the audio. If you click all enhancement options, you'll see that they've got a light, medium and full. And if you hover next to each option, you can see what they're doing to the audio. I'm going to stop this recording here and the next bit of audio will be using the full enhancements. The audio you're hearing now is fully enhanced. I mentioned this at the very beginning of the video. 
Now, Nomono Sound Capsule is capable of spatial audio. What that means is if you hit spatialize at the bottom of the, of the enhancement options, you'll hear each voice as a listener coming from the direction the person was originally sitting in around the space recorder and relative to each microphone. So it'll feel like you're in the room with them. Now I've loved everything about the Nomono Sound Capsule. The only thing that I've noticed is that despite the microphone being clipped to my collar, as shown in the instructions, there has been some popping on the mic. I haven't edited that out of this video so you can hear it when it happens, but as an audio producer, that's something that I've emailed Nomono about to find out a little bit more. There is so much that I love about the Nomono Sound Capsule. The first thing above all would have to be how portable and compact it is. You carry it in your hand and everything that you need is in here. Obviously there are going to be some records and shoot days where you need more equipment, but this is a great catch-all for some of the stuff that I do both inside and outside. And it's just super convenient. Everything that I need is in this one tiny, tiny box. The second thing that I love is how sleek it looks. I do want to feel excited to use my gear. I want to feel like it looks cool. And I think they've done a great job with this. Everything about it is nice and tidy. I love that the, the windbreakers for the space capsule and the microphones don't look big and clunky. I love that. Um, the only thing I would say is I would love for the microphones to be like a tiny bit smaller. However, I'm aware that there are a few microphones that look like this on the market and they do look bigger than this, so it's not the biggest deal in the world. I like how good this looks on camera. It's not distracting, it's not clunky, so, you know, not the end of the world. The third thing that I love about the sound capsule is how easy it is to use. You pop the top, put your microphone on, hit the big red button and that is it, like it could not be easier. And as someone who loves to stick to their recording day schedule, this means that there aren't any long lag times because somebody needs to go to the bathroom, we need to take off their equipment, they would need to change their top and it takes a while to take off their equipment and then re-mic them. You literally unclip this or take off the magnet, pop it back on, pop it back on and you're done. That's so easy. I do want to touch on price before I wrap up. The sound capsule costs £2,190 excluding VAT. At the moment the cloud software that you have to pay for is free because they're in their beta testing. However, in future, there will be three tiers of pricing. Having used the Nomono Sound Capsule for just under a month now, I wanted to add a couple of final thoughts to this video. One is that the subscriptions that I just mentioned, or the subscription tiers that I just mentioned for the cloud, the most expensive being $29 a month. For that price and for the upfront cost of £2,190 excluding VAT, I would expect more than just 20 hours of audio enhancements. I record a lot of audio every week, every month, and I would definitely need more than that. So for that price, I would expect more. A couple of positives from the month. I haven't had to recharge the Nomono Sound Capsule once. I charged it once when it arrived and then it's lasted the whole month, which is impressive. The second thing is you don't need to set levels for the Sound Capsule and I haven't had a single problem with peaking or audio distortion or anything. I wrote down a few bugs that I experienced over the month. The first being I was recording without Wi-Fi, which you can do. And basically what's meant to happen is the audio gets stored on the sound capsule. When you get within range of Wi-Fi, it automatically uploads to the cloud. I did that. I was without Wi-Fi, came back in range of Wi-Fi at home and only one of the two microphones uploaded to the cloud. The second track from the second microphone just disappeared, which was very annoying. The second bug I experienced happened quite a few times, and it was basically that the sound capsule is supposed to automatically detect which microphone you're using and then only record the audio from the microphones you're using. A few times it couldn't figure out which ones I was using and instead recorded through all four microphones, which was frustrating and there was nothing that I could do to stop it from doing that. I closed the case, I opened it back up again, I gave it a couple of hours and it kept doing that, so that was annoying. The third problem I was having was probably one of the biggest problems, and that is that there was continued popping on the microphone. I used a couple of mics and it was still that way. I figured out that if you placed the microphone where they recommended, which is central on your chest, there would be popping. And if you moved it slightly off center or slightly further down, the popping was reduced. But for £2,190, I would want there to be no popping on the microphone, or at least for the instructions to be changed to ensure that they tell people where the microphone should be to avoid that problem. 
So in summary, I think it is a great piece of equipment. The concept is a great idea. The portability, the spatial audio capacity is really, really cool. However, if I had what 2,190 pounds to spend on equipment, I probably wouldn't buy this just yet because I think there are a few bugs that they still need to work out.